Yeah, we do so many things in here. You know what, if you can unhook this from wherever it is. Thank you. I usually uh, and play tell, my machine Tell us again what that machine is. Okay, this is a, a Panasonic NV504. And the probes are mandatory. You know, work these machines up and put probes on the thing to make sure everything's lined up right. What kind of color process does it use? Uh, I will show you. I, in fact, uh, somebody just sent me the books for the color processor. There's no color processing in the machine. Uh -huh. Everything that gets done has to be done external. I see. So there's actually, it's, it's kind of like the color pack, the Sony uh, CPs. Right. But what you do is you run the video into a, a pre-processor. It takes the chroma makes it into FM, yeah. records it on tape as C-CAM, which is the only thing you can record on, the, on a low band machine to get right. the color out of the C-CAM. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm bumping my phone. All right. The reason I'm doing this with the power off which is the way you should only throw right. the IBC The scanner machine. runs. If the scanner's running, you have a chance of chipping the head. Absolutely. So people, I see people do that all the time with the IBCs, and I cringe when I see them do that. Yep. All right, let's see what we got here. Sounds good. Your audio. Yep. There's no TVC on this, and you can see the levels are pretty whacked out from the guy who reported it. That's not a modulator issue. That's actually what they recorded on the tape. Right. It's amazing these machines worked at well, all. Well, it, it has pretty good range, doesn't it? Yeah, you'd be surprised. Yeah, you know, you think about white clippers and where they're supposed to be set in these BTRs. And, you know, this guy's got two volts running into the thing, and it recorded it. Now there's no dropout compensator. That's right off the tape. From wow. A, how old? 40 year old tape. Now look. Now the video's good. Okay. So. Oh. oh. Let me flip. Dave, right behind you. There's a switch for the lights. The one nearest. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the playing of our national anthem? This is where the head switching was put in the format. It was put about 10 lines up. Oh, so that's factory spec there, huh? That's factory spec, wow. yep. Yeah, way the hell up in the picture, um, because the IBC, of course, they stuck it in the vertical interval. Uh, what IBC did is they put it right in here, about line 12. And what happens is, when the machine is brand new out of the factory and everything's in good shape, mm -hmm. they drop out as about a line wide. So you just see one little line of noise in there. After the machine's about 100 hours on it, the head wears a little bit, you a little bit of junk on the scanner, it's about five lines wide. And it keeps going. And then when the servos get a little sloppy, it starts doing this. So the next thing you got is that the dropout is sitting over on top of the equalizing pulses, and the monitor just completely unlocks. So this is one of the issues with IVC machines, especially the taste we get in here, because if the guy who recorded it didn't play it back, uh, there's a chance on an older machine or a machine that's been in service for a while, it just isn't going to play ever. That was, that was a real issue with these yeah, You would know, I haven't seen an IBC machine running since 1976. Thank, oh, you. Got, oh. Thank you, John. Uh.